Earlier this year, just as we were sitting down for the evening, Paula happened to notice a large turtle digging a nest in the sandy soil behind our house. This wasn't surprising, though, because it seems to be a preferred spot for pregnant turtles looking to lay their eggs. You see, the sandy soil is on top of a small hill, and at the bottom, there's also a small pond, which makes it an ideal habitat for the hatchlings that would hopefully emerge in the fall. But unfortunately, that rarely ends up being the case, because this also happens to be the stomping grounds for a family of hungry raccoons. So, while we've encountered a number of freshly laid turtle nests over the past few years, it's usually the following morning, after being scavenged during the night. So this time around, we decided to wait it out, and then help give the little ones an extra chance at survival. However, waiting it out can require a great deal of patience, because a Blanding's turtle, as we later identified her, can take up to six hours to lay her entire clutch of up to 22 eggs which meant that we had to keep checking on her progress until nearly midnight. However, once the deed was finally done, Paula and I grabbed a headlamp and ran outside. Now, when protecting a turtle nest from predators, the goal is to prevent digging while also being careful not to disturb the area any more than necessary. So, from what we've read, the best bet is to use a small wooden frame and cover it with metal hardware cloth, which, coincidentally, we already had left over from our storing tomatoes in wood ash experiment. The only other thing you need is a method for securing it to the ground. You can use tent pegs or garden stakes, but we decided that the easiest choice was just some fairly heavy rocks. So once the frame was positioned over the nest, we placed a rock on each side, wished them a good night, and then headed in to bed. The next morning, we were happy to see that the nest was still secure, and that there were no signs of sabotage. So now, all we needed to do was wait. But while we do that, I should probably point out that we typically wouldn't advocate for interfering with natural life cycles. However, in this case, one could argue that we owe them a little assistance. For example, the Blanding's turtle is one of eight turtle species native to Ontario, Canada. But unfortunately, all of them are now considered at risk. And as you might expect, a big part of that has to do with us because the top causes of population decline are roadkill and habitat loss. For example, in southern Ontario, where the human population is highest, over 70% of wetland habitats have already been destroyed, meaning that we need to be very careful with the remaining 30%, not to mention the plants and animals that they support. So, when given the opportunity to help some eggs become hatchlings, we were more than happy to oblige. And I should probably also point out that from our perspective, turtles are born with another pretty serious disadvantage to their overall survival. Because while birds will lay a few eggs and then stick around to incubate them, feed them once they hatch, and teach them a few life skills before kicking them out of the nest, mother turtles, on the other hand, have a more hands-off, set-it-and-forget-it approach. For example, though it may be difficult to see in this grainy cell phone video, while we were busy protecting her nest, the mother turtle was just walking away. And why shouldn't she? Because after laying her eggs, a mother turtle's motherly duties are complete. In a few months, if they're lucky, her young will hatch and venture off into the world, but they'll do it without any further assistance from her. In fact, she'll likely never see them again. But before we label her as some sort of deadbeat mom, it's important to remember that our judgment is based on our human perspective. But from her perspective, she's already done everything she could. For example, most female Blanding's turtles don't reach reproductive maturity until they're 20 to 25 years old, which means that she already had to survive on her own for a couple of decades just to start thinking about laying eggs. And because only about 1% of those eggs are likely to hatch and make it to adulthood, most turtles spend several more decades in cycles of pregnancy and birth before even one of them is finally successful. So she's certainly put in the time. Plus, the ideal habitat for mating isn't necessarily ideal for birthing, which means that Blanding's turtles typically have to travel up to three kilometers in search of a nesting location, all the while avoiding traffic and human predators looking to illegally turn her into a pet or a meal. Once she finally chooses an appropriate location, she must dig a hole with her hind legs and then sit vulnerably for hours while depositing her eggs. Afterwards, some turtles will urinate on the sand, to form clumps of mud over the nest. This is to plug the opening and hopefully prevent other animals from honing in on the scent. And then finally, once everything is complete, she needs to hightail it back to the relative safety of her summer habitat, 
So, considering how much of her life she devotes to having children, it seems unfair to suggest that they're not a priority. And besides, what turtles lack in parental instincts, they more than make up for in child instincts. If you think about it, baby humans are born completely helpless, so they need dedicated parents to look after them for years. Whereas baby turtles are born fully independent and capable of looking after themselves. So it's not that turtle parents aren't willing to stick around, but rather that they simply aren't necessary. So again, it seems pretty negligent to us, but chances are we'd probably seem pretty overprotective to them. Anyway, back to the nest. Now, Blanding's turtle eggs typically hatch after about 50 to 75 days, so we began checking on them regularly toward the end of August. And after a couple of weeks of no activity, we finally noticed a change. A small hole had appeared in the top of the nest, and there were obvious signs of digging. Then, after a few minutes of carefully inspecting the surrounding area, we eventually spotted the most adorable little hatchling. Covered in sand and looking a bit tuckered out, but I suppose that's to be expected considering what he or she had just been through. You see, once baby turtles are ready to hatch, they, like birds, use a tiny bump on the front of their beak to begin cracking through the shell. This bump is called an egg tooth, and it's only there for this one purpose. In fact, it typically falls off or is reabsorbed shortly after exiting the nest. But, as you can imagine, even with the right tools, hatching from a hard shell is a lot of work, and can take up to three days. So afterward, the hatchling will rest inside the nest for another week or so, before mustering up the energy to dig its way out. During the wait, they consume the egg yolk, which is still connected through a small gap in the underside of their shell, just like umbilical cords in humans. In fact, they even have belly buttons, too. Then, once finally free, they immediately begin exploring their new world and searching for a safe place to hibernate over winter. So, we watched this little one's progress for some time, but began to get a bit concerned for his or her safety once the sun began to set. Adult turtles have very few predators, but baby turtles, much like eggs, are still pretty delicate and can make an easy snack for raccoons, foxes, and coyotes, all of which we have here in abundance. So, much like helping an adult turtle cross the road, we decided to help little Sandy find the pond. Oh yeah, we named him or her Sandy. Anyway, once in the mud, Sandy quickly found shelter among the cattails. And so after a few more minutes of observation, we said goodbye. But one final note. As I mentioned, all eight turtle species native to Ontario are currently at risk. And there are several organizations that keep track of their status. So, while we had Sandy in our hands, we also took a few quick photos for identification, and then later submitted them along with other sighting information for tracking. We will place the links for our area in the description, but encourage you to Google the equivalent organizations where you live. Turtle species are in decline in many other parts of the world as well, so if you see one, please consider reporting the sighting. But for now, much like the mother turtle, Sandy is on his or her own, because we never found any siblings. So we'll keep an eye out for another couple of weeks, just in case. But in the meantime, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon.